So before I get out on the water and tell you all what I'm doing today, I've got to go over a few rules. In the state of Rhode Island for 2023 and going forward, they have changed the rules for boating, which includes kayaks, canoes, rowboats, john boats, paddle boats, basically anything that paddles, pedals, or rows. Due to the number of drownings last year in the state, and they cited one specifically a kayaker who stood up in his kayak and did not have a life vest on and it wasn't even a kayak meant to stand up and that he was fishing um, he drowned and did not resurface so the new rules are you must at all times be wearing a life vest you can no longer just have it with you and take it off you must be wearing it second off you are now required to have one of these. This is an air horn, okay? A little sportsman type. Loud voice does not work. Um, it's not allowed. You cannot scream, you cannot use the whistle. You must have one of these. And you can pick these up at any sporting supply. Basically, they sound like, they sound like that, pretty loud. So, new for this year is you gotta have one of these on your vessel so that you can be heard in the case of an emergency. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get loaded up. We're gonna let you know exactly what we're gonna be fishing and what we're gonna be doing today. I hope the audio is good because I'm not using the media mod on the GoPro today. Got it in its waterproof setup because I am out in the kayak. First time for 2023. And I said I would return to the lake that I fished at in my last video because there's multiple species in here. I said I'd return here if it wasn't windy. It's a little bit breezier than what I had hoped, but hopefully the wind doesn't pick up because it's actually pretty nice right now. It's a little bit cooler. It's only in the 60s. We did have a hard freeze last night and a frost for almost the end of May, which was kind of crazy. Got down into the low 30s, some places into the upper 20s. So if you have your gardens planted, I hope you went ahead and covered that vegetation. So what am I gonna be doing today? I'm gonna be saving pretty much the bass fishing in this lake until more in the summer when the water heats up. I really, really, believe that there's still a lot more trout in here to be caught so i'm going to be going a little bit old school today and what i mean by old school is a lot of the younger people um people younger than myself people younger than probably 45 don't know this method of fishing with a fly and the reason behind that is you really can't fly find the barbers anymore for it so what I've got here is I've got the Carlisle Bug and Bubble. It used to be that you could get these plastic bobbers that you could fill halfway up with water and then troll a fly behind them to be able to cast them further and simulate fly fishing with a spinning rod. These here are the closest I could find. You cannot fill them up with water. The eyelets actually screw into them. This is a four bubble pack and it actually comes with one bumblebee. Although there's really no bumblebees out right now. So might switch to a different dry fly later, but I'll put the bumblebee on for now. I know probably what's going to end up happening is I'm also going to catch a lot of kivers. And by kivers, I mean up here in the tri-state area of New England, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, that's what we call sunfish. Your bluegill, long ear, red breast, uh, green sunfish variety, we just lump them all into kivers. We do not include crappie in that. But how we're going to fish these is I'm going to tie off one end to the narrower pot, and then I'm going to tie about a foot to two foot leader to the other pot and then tie the fly and then you cast it and you just kind of slowly troll it behind it and we'll see what bites so i think i'm going to go ahead and try the bumblebee 
that they give you with it just even though i haven't really seen too many bumblebees this year but we'll see if that actually works all righty so here we go got the bubble set up tied off my pole got about a foot to a foot and a half with the bumblebee we'll see if this catches anything and man it wasn't even two seconds and i got something on already let's see what we got Yep. <laughs> uh, like I said would happen first one is a kiver so yeah they're a lot of fun to catch also but definitely hopefully targeting the trout ah don't pee on me get out of here alrighty well so far I've been catching kiver after kiver on this setup No trout yet. Kind of wondering if the trout are a little bit in deeper water than what I got this set up for. So I may switch over to the fly uh, fly rod shortly and um, fish a uh, sinking nymph. Not for now. Uh, stop and drift a little too close to the shoreline. We got the trout. <laughs> He's got me all wet. There we go. That's how you do it. That's a trout. He's a little bit smaller than what I'm looking for, so. And I got a freezer full of food, so we're, we're gonna go ahead and let him go. There we go. But yeah, see, you can get trout this way. So my plan is to only keep the bigger ones today since I got a freezer full of fish and uh, deer meat. Not really going to target the small, small ones like that one was. Although he was a good sized trout, but I'm just going to target the bigger ones today. Yep. Someone else just hit it. See if he comes back for it. Nope. All right, feels like we got something a little bit better on here. Oh, another. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you going? Get. Whoa, get back here. Well, that's a good size so. <laughs> All right, all right, all righty. There we go. That's a good size trout. That one, I think I will keep. Mm, actually, he's about the size of the last one, so. I'm gonna let him go. I want the real, real big ones. But yeah, another good size trout. Oh, there he is. <laughs> All right. So they're hitting on the surface on this bumblebee as well. Um, makes me wonder I see a uh, possible midge hatch going on a lot of little tiny tiny bugs on top of the water so I'm wondering if these bigger ones are actually a little bit lower in the feeding I'm in some very deep water right now so I might switch over to the fly rod with a uh, very small sinking nymph on it or maybe even switch out to a larger fly um, that's a little bit sinking. Oh, hang on. Just had something else. Well, he bit for it, but he didn't want to come back. <laughs> yeah, so. Having a lot of fun fishing this old school way. So far we got kivers and we got a couple trout. All right, one more cast old school way then we'll switch over to the fly rod with the sinking nymph and see what we do fishing a little bit deeper in the food stream 
All right, we got another one on the old school way. Let's see what this one is. Oh, he's pulling pretty good. Is it another? Whoa, this one's this one's taking drag. Whoa, ha. whoa, he's jump. He's a jumper. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. This one's a keeper. Ah, oh, no, he just got off. Should have got the net. <laughs> oh man, that was a good one. Should have got the net, but I tried to reach for him. Oh man, he was a good one. Alrighty, well, oh, a little bit of water. There we go. So, we've been having way too much fun um, that method. So, we'll try something a little bit more difficult, and that's fly fishing from a kayak. So, what I got is um, I've got a um, very, very small sinking nymph on it, uh, something to get me a little bit deeper in the water. So, we'll see if anything will hit this. Uh, first, I need to get a little bit away from this short line, starting to drift in. Might throw on a bigger fly, though, since I'm out here in the middle of the lake. Alrighty, well, that nymph was a little bit too small. It wasn't giving me the action that I wanted. So, I switched to a little bit of a heavier terrestrial um, stonefly type nymph that'll sink a little bit easier to see in this uh, very deep dark water so we'll see if anything hits on it if not I'll go back to the uh, floating bumblebee bobber because right now there's a lot of little bugs on the top of the water and some stuff is starting to hit on the top but I am very curious about what's just below the surface in this deeper water. So we're going to fly fish this for a little bit. Uh, would love to catch one on the fly rod from the kayak. Although the wind is starting to pick up a little bit, which is playing into some of my casting. And it's starting to turn. So, let's cast the other direction. I think I got one on the fly rod. Uh, maybe not. He just jumped like crazy. He hit it and jumped like crazy. Let's see if he comes back for it. Definitely been much slower getting them to hit on the fly rod. Seems like they're only interested in what is on the surface than just below it or deeper. May go back to that bumblebee on the barber method. Because right now I'm trying a dry fly. Um, so I just had a good hit. He um, jumped within his mouth, but he ended up coming right off. So, alrighty. Well, I switched back over to the bumblebee on the bobber method um had a couple hits on the dry fly that i switched over to on the fly rod but they just were not committing to it like they are committing to this bumblebee setup that i showed you earlier so switch back to that and we'll see what we catch from there going on don't feel that big Yeah, it's a giver. Yeah, it's a giver. 
Oh yeah, this uh, bumblebee on this barber set has been producing more and more results than anything else. So, I guess there's something to be said about old school fishing versus all this new finagle technology and these lures and everything. Fly on a floating bobber, mealworms, night crawlers, plastic worms. This has been something, something said about old school fishing. All right, we got something a little bit larger on this time. It's actually pulling drag. What do we got? Oh, it's a trail. Uh, let me get my net because... Oh yeah, he's pulling drag and not wanting to come. Oh, now he's under the kayak. <laughs> uh, there he is. <laughs> Telling you, they're loving this bumblebee today. Let's see, is he the size I'm gonna keep? All right, all right, all right, all right, slow down. Yep, you already spit the hook. Thank you. He's a decent size. He's a decent size. Not as big as the other one. You know, go ahead and let this guy go. There you go. Goodbye. Have fun. Alrighty. Yeah. <laughs> Old school method. Alrighty, well, I had a feeling this was going to be a kiver. As he hit it, as soon as it landed, kept tapping it, it wasn't going to commit. So, I had a feeling this was going to be a kiver. Go on. Alright, let's cast this one over to the deep. More out towards the middle of the pond. See what we hit out there. Tell you, they're loving this old school method. Bumblebee fly on a floating bobber today. Oh, I got something really, really big on. Oh my god. What is this? He is really not moving. He's saying deep too. What is this? Oh my God. Oh my God. Come here. Come here. Gotcha. Whoa. That is a monster. That one I'm keeping. Oh, man. That one I am keeping. That is a good, good size one. Oh, man. He choked that, too. Oh, man. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Stay, stay still. He choked that one hard. That is a good size trout. That's the keeper. I'm gonna keep that one, folks. All right, so, as I was saying earlier, the limit is only five trout per day. Have to be eight inches or greater, so. With having a lot of food in the freezer already, I'm only targeting the larger ones. That one I would have had to keep anyway because he really, really swallowed that bumblebee um, and was bleeding in a mess when I uh, took the hook out of him. So, yeah, we're just having we're just having a great, great day today. Let's get another one, folks. <laughs> yeah, we're just loving this bumblebee on this old school method. Like I said, I would really love to get one fly rod but 
don't know, may switch back to the fly rod in a little bit. <laughs> if I keep catching too many this way. Oh, I'm sitting here talking to you and I got another hit already. Definitely a small one now. He wasn't pulling much. Came off the hook right away, so. <sighs> yeah, they're just, they're just hitting on the surface. This old school method. Oh yeah, I got something playing with it again. Hey, he's not really taking it. Oh, there goes the bobber. Oh, this guy's pulling a bit. Yeah, another caber. Another caber. Thought he was a little light. Oh, he was a little bit light. Ah. I definitely said I wanted to catch something from the fly rod today. And I wasn't going to get up until I did. Oh, he just jumped off. Man. Ah. He just came off. Ah. Too bad, too. He felt pretty good. But... That wind is really, really starting to pick up. I had to put the fly rod away and reposition myself. Holy cow. That's a no good fish. Oh, oh, just jumped off. Oh, man, he just, just jumped off. That was another nice, nice fish. Whew. Tell you, man. Bone B fly on, on the bobber old school method. They're just nailing it today. And the wind stopped again. <laughs> oh well, I'm not bringing out the fly rod for a while. Not till the wind totally, totally calms down. I seem to be nailing it way too much this way right now to. Oh, oh. Something just hit again. Didn't commit to it though. He tapped it. Alrighty, well, I can definitely tell you that today the trout have been hanging out in the deeper water as opposed to the shoreline or any structures or anything like that. Probably because of the number of people who have been shore fishing since opening day. Plus, there's a blue heron over there. There's a blue heron over there, and there are a couple ospreys flying overhead. So, I'm definitely seeing a lot of blue herons and a lot of ospreys. So, it's possible that um, the trout are a little skittish of being picked off in these shallower waters. But, yeah, they're definitely hanging out in deeper waters. And, again, this old school method. Just, they just... Look, there's something else hitting it, but not committing. <laughs> oh, I really want to get one on the fly rod today, but might have blew that only chance. Alright. Got something else on. Let's see what he is. Where is he going? Yeah, another caver. Just another caver. So something hit it right at the boat. Right at the boat, something hit it. That's what I think it is. Oh, yeah, he just let go. Huh, it was a pickerel. It was a pickerel, right at the boat. He just hit it right at the boat. It was a pickerel. Okay, that's yet another species, which is definitely why I want to get a heavier fly rod than the um, four to six weights that I have. Really want to start targeting bass and pickerel and pike on a fly. Just had another hit. Tiny man. 
This old school method is slaying these fish today. Just slaying them. So I had to move because the wind was picking me up and was picking up and definitely not blowing me in the direction I really wanted to go. So, but now it's dead calm again. So we got the fly rod back out. Let's see if we can get a trout or something on this fly rod. I'll tell you one thing. I do like the setup of this lake. Definitely seeing some areas that could definitely hold some bass. And the fact that I caught a pickerel on the uh, bumblebee setup with the bobber it was really interesting. Uh, yeah, here comes the breeze again. Definitely not going to make for trying to use this fly rod and all that great. All right, well, I don't know how much more action I'm going to have top of water. And the reason is that wind is just picking up. It's blowing me all over the place. I had to move to more of a protected area. You can probably still hear the wind. You can see them drifting. And there are just dead midges all over the place on top of this water. So we had a pretty strong patch today and that's why they were hitting top of the water earlier but um that seems to stop so i think for the remainder of my day i may switch it up yet old school again um just kind of go with a night crawler or a mealworm i'm gonna try a couple more casts with this bobber and uh bumblebee set up but right now it seems like top water action has stopped because of this uh, wind and all these thousands upon thousands of dead midges. It looks like just a sheen of white on the water from it. So it looks like top water and fly fishing might be done for today. We're going to kick it up old school probably for the rest of the day with um, night crawlers and uh, male grub worms and see what we get with that. See a couple more midges flying around dotting the water but nothing nothing is after them at all alrighty well I don't know how well the GoPro is going to pick this up there goes the uh, wind again but you see all that white sheen that is all dead midges from the massive hatch that was going on so yeah that's pretty much why everything has shut off right now as far as any fish go at all. Alrighty, well we had a really good day today. That fish was on fire just biting the uh, bumblebee on that bobber. So, you know, when the wind picked up, everything just kind of shut off because the super midge hatch just died. But we had an awesome, awesome day, so... We'll go ahead and we'll catch you in the next video.